All right, everyone. Tonight we have uh, a pair of talks from Position Development. Uh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Give it up for them. <laughs> they are one of our excellent local Haskell consulting firms. Uh, and they're going to be talking about web development, how they do it in Haskell. Uh, Libby Horacek is going to give us sort of the uh, beginner introduction, uh, you know, how you would actually use this library. Uh, and then later, uh, Daniel Patterson is going to take over explaining, you know, how it actually works internally uh, so that we can get a little bit uh, more detail on that. So take it away, Libby. Give it up. Um, hello, um, I'm Libby Horacek from Position Development. Um, I've been making web apps with them, some of them in Haskell, for a few months now. And uh, one of the frameworks we used was created by my coworker Daniel, and it's called FN. Um, okay, I want to talk a little bit about um, how you can think about apps as um, functions with types like we do in Haskell and I'm going to show you a very simple text only website I'm going to show how you can use functions from another library WA, um, to make more complicated responses than just plain text and I'll show you some really nifty things about how FN's um, how you can use FN's routing so um, this is a beginner level talk, but there are some things that you, sh some Haskell things that you should know before starting a web app, like how to use the basic types, or the basics of how the type system works. Um, you should know how to make a data type and how to make it an instance of a type class. You should um, know about maybe and I/O types. So when we're thinking about making a web app in Haskell. Um, how can we think of that in terms of uh, a function and its types? Well, what we think of it is that it's a function that takes a request and returns a response. Everything you need to know about how to construct that response is in the request. It's such a beautiful idea and so pure and wonderful. <laughs> but of course, in real life, your apps need to do, do stuff. <laughs> so your apps need to talk to a database. It, they need to cache things. They need to make API calls and set cookies. Um, so just saying that it's a request to a response is not uh, enough. <laughs> but you can still make a type that expresses this, right? You can say it's a request and some context and then it does some stuff, so it's I.O., and it still returns a response. So what is FN? FN is a library that gives you tools for representing application state, parsing your request and routing it, um, for constructing response, and for interfacing with these other libraries and the server warp. So here's what a very, very simple website um, would look like. Wow, it's amazing. <laughs> and so that's, that's our index page, and if you go to any other page, they're not found. But it's simple enough that I can say in one slide how it works. So. <laughs> So it still has some application state. It has the request. So we can make a data type that contains just a request. Then we make some functions that will tell FN how to get the request out of the context. Um, does that make sense to everybody? OK, cool. The context is also where you can put um, things like your da database that you're going to talk to. or Redis or whatever else you needed. Um, when we're making, actually running our, our website, it's going to be using 
these two libraries, um, WAI and Warp. So WAI is a common interface for um, web frameworks and web libraries that gives you a way that you can include to different libraries for sessions and logging. And yeah, Warp's the server. So this is how you make your context run in this server. So we use Warp's um, uh, function run, which takes just an integer for the port number. And we're going to give it an application. But what is our application? Well, fn gives you 2y, um, which you can use by giving it a context to start out with, a function that tells how to take a context and make a response, and then um, it'll return an application. So what is, what is our context I response? We're going to make one. And to do that, we're going to use a couple more functions from fn. There is route, explain in detail in a minute. <laughs> um, route takes a context and a list of routes and um, tries the request against those routes. We also use a uh, fall through, which will give us a response if every um, so here's the entire Hello World app. Um, any questions about how that works? So you don't want to be just plain text. Um, so there are a few different ways to construct response that FN gives you. So um, for 200 responses, there's OK text and OK HTML. The only difference being um, one is text and one is HTML. And the same for 500 status and um, 400. You can also construct your own. WAI's response type. <laughs> So let's say you wanted to implement a kind of obscure um, protocol. You could um, use WAI's response constructor and a status from network HTTP, and then just um, build it up. So here I'm saying my response uh, is going to have this status. It's going to have no headers, and it's going to print out this response. And that's like the I'm not a coffee maker response from a neighbor fool's uh, RFC. <laughs> um, there are also lots of templating options. Um, these are all just other libraries that you can make interface with, with FN. So probably the easiest one is Lucid. Lucid. So um, Lucid is really neat because you can just um, nest functions representing tags the same way you would nest them if you were writing HTML. The problem is that this uh, view has the type HTML unit. And all these um, responses, uh, response functions take just plain strict text. But it's not that big of an obstacle. You can uh, make a helper function that um, this is from Lucid, render text, make uh, lead text out of your HTML. Then you um, use too strict to make it strict text. Then you use OK make HTML like usual. And now your handler is just uh, a lucid HTML of your view. Um, does that make any questions about, about how that works? Okay. 
Um, this, you can also make it more template-like by pulling elements out and then passing them into other views. So um, you could say that your index view is going to use a base view. Um, and then your base view takes the title of a page and some other view. Any questions about that? So to lead into Daniel's talk, let's go a little bit deeper into the routing function. So um, a, the route function takes a context and a list of routes. And each route has some patterns that the, requ the pattern, the URL or request might match, and a handler that might handle it. And either side can fail. <laughs> so um, each, the whole uh, set of routes might fail, which is why it's IO maybe a response. To make it just an IO response, we provide this fall through function will catch any um, match. There are lots of patterns, not just the end one that we've looked at so far. Um, end matches when there's nothing left to match in the request. Um, path, will, path something will match literally that thing. Uh, a met, you can match on methods. And you can also just match anything if you want to have something that catches any request. Um, there are also patterns that will pass arguments into the handler, and these are where things get kind of neat. <laughs> so there's segment, um, which matches any URL segment, and then there's params, which, which will match uh, get or post params. So here's one way you might use it. You could have it, if you go to hello, you get one uh, response, like, try hello slash your name. <laughs> then if you go to hello slash your name, you get hello Libby or hello Matt. Um, and the type of that segment matches up with the, the type of this handler. Oh, whoops. Ah, that skips over there. Um, so a really interesting thing is this means that you can have two, um, two, path, two routes that have the exact same pattern. So both these routes have the same pattern, add segments, but they lead to different handlers based on the types of those segments. So add one, two will return this response. Uh, one plus two is three. It sums the, the segment. Whereas add ny Haskell will return ny plus Haskell is at my Haskell. You can also have two different routes that lead to the same handler. Um, so different patterns, same handler. And if we put all of these together, um, that's a good sum of what FN routing is like. <laughs> um, any questions about, about these? Yes? There's there's these um, ooh, good, so there's these um, uh, there's a two param type class that will try to convert it into a param uh, into whatever type is given and if it doesn't match then it's nothing and it falls through. Uh huh. Yeah. Yep. 
this, this is, this is, each one of these routes is a type route. Hmm? Well, that's where Daniel's talk comes in. <laughs> how, how these all have different, how, how, how it all works out. <laughs> so I'll refer you to his talk. Any other questions? Cool. Um, so um, if you want to learn more, we have a website now. It's brand new. <laughs> you can go to fnhaskell.com. Um, I've also written a tutorial that will take you how to create, take you through how to create all these, t all these little sites that um, I showed today. And you can also, it's Literate Haskell, so you can go to um, our tutorial on the website and see the sites there too. Um, so that's all I have, thanks. Oh, sorry. Any questions? Um, you, you can serve static assets. Um, FM provides um, static serve for, for that. Yep, um, actually that's one of the, I'm gonna write the tutorial tomorrow. <laughs> yes? Um, I didn't build it, so Daniel's gonna answer that. <laughs> uh huh. Sorry? Um, if you wanted to write your own function for combining segments, that, right, I guess you could. <laughs> um, anything else? All right. Well, thanks. thanks.